If you are self studying a language, listen up because most likely you've been making these same mistakes over and over again, and it's really holding you back in your language learning and from reaching your potential. Welcome back to language travel. D. My name is Emily. I love helping high achiever, multi-passionate language learners find lifelong confidence and joy in their language learning by helping them understand, connect, and integrate their authentic selves into their language studies. The very first mistake is thinking it gets easier the longer you spend with a language and or the more languages that you learn. So from a purely acquisition standpoint, that is pretty accurate sometimes. If you were learning German, for example, you probably would have less trouble learning Dutch and Afrikaans. It's entirely possible, however, I will mention that even learning French after learning Spanish and Italian did not work out well for me. Like the whole sort of promise that the language learning communities I follow give is this will be easier for you if you go into a similar language. But we forget that we are humans and we have a lot of mental blocks and emotional barriers to our languages that language acquisition tips cannot teach us. Plus, the more you learn about things like comprehensible input, how much input to do versus output, I mean, all of these really analytical, logical tips, eventually you start to get more of a hang of it the more languages you learn and or the longer that you study a language. Whether you suddenly hit a wall after feeling confident at times, or you're just tired of never really feeling confident, the more you deal with the wondering of how do you function as an adult, as a human being with the languages that you want to keep in your life for whatever reason. Maybe you've noticed that your perfectionism, your constant striving, your ambition has hurt you in the past. Trying to find the balance between being a human and doing what you really, really care about. That is what makes continuing to learn languages or going deeper into one language even more difficult. Now, this news may seem pessimistic, but it's actually a blessing to call language learning one of the biggest self-development projects that you will ever have in your life. And I love this quote to kind of encompass this. Maybe your life will work. Most likely it won't at first, but that will give you poetry. The second mistake is thinking that the language learning process has to look a certain way. Sometimes we think this should feel hard and complicated. Why is this feeling easy to me? There's something wrong with what I'm doing. Or it can go the other way when you do start to see a lot of advertisements from language apps or any sort of classes that say this should be easy. I'm going to tell you how to speak fluently in the most lazy or easy way as possible. And then you start trying to implement those kinds of things and you're like, why is this not working for me? There must be something wrong. When we language learners think simple means easy, we get even more critical of ourselves when doing quote unquote simple things gets hard for us. We don't make room for self-compassion and we discredit things that are easy for us to do, aka our strengths. It's easy to discount everything you've done. If you start thinking, oh, well, any of this process should look hard. It should be complicated. The process, exactly like life, will never look a certain way. If you are a language learner, especially as an adult, there is no avoiding how your language learning is going to impact your life and vice versa. All of these language learning acquisition videos are great, but they will always fail to encompass your language learning journey and overall what it is to actually be human. Mistake number three, and this has probably touched me the most, is we run away from our feelings. We prioritize analytical intelligence over emotional intelligence. We love systems and efficiency everywhere we look. Even with all of this AI technology that I'm seeing, it's always more efficient. How can I be doing this better? How can I get immediate gratification from using this certain app? And learning and thinking in a logical way has also been pushed on us in the school system. But of course, there is more than one way to be intelligent. And honestly, emotional intelligence has helped me so much more than analytical, logical intelligence ever has learning languages as an adult. Emotional intelligence technically is the ability to manage both your own emotions and understand the emotions of people around you. And there are also five elements to emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. And as we move through adulthood and what's right, what's wrong is left for ultimately you to decide. There is no right way to do language learning in life, as we said with mistake number two. It is a skill that we have 
to learn and we underestimate its power and influence on our language learning journey. Emotions anyway, especially when we're learning languages, are rarely consciously perceived because we have all of these other moving parts in our head telling us, I think this is what I should be doing, instead of actually listening to ourselves and regulating our emotions so that we actually have more cognitive space to understand what decision, what method, what organization tips are actually right for us in the moment of our lives. By the way, this is actually what I work on in my private coaching community, the Mindful Multilinguals Collective, developed for multi-passionate and high achieving language learners, where we prioritize our well-being, curiosity, and ultimately how we can be more of ourselves in our languages. I bring exclusive trainings about topics just like you're watching in this video. Plus, we also host an active community that meets up weekly to discuss these topics in more depth. Use the link down below if you are interested. The fourth mistake, we as language learners try to learn languages, reach those language learning goals in order to avoid shame and failure. We play to not lose instead of playing to win. We strive trying to reach our language learning goals, motivated by failure and shame aka playing to not lose instead of playing to win, aka being inspired. And there's a lot going on here psychologically that is buried inside of us, especially when we feel overwhelmed and frustrated and wondering if we'll even make it in this language learning chasing goals thing. Most high achievers think that they are driven by success, but studies show otherwise. They're actually driven by the avoidance of failure. Now this study from Harvard Business Review by Heidi Grant and Etori Higgins shed light on this and they bring up two types of motivation, promotion-oriented motivation and prevention-oriented motivation. Promotion-oriented motivation, AKA, you learn languages in order to win. You are inspired. You live your life based on your definition of success, your adherence to your values in your life. Easier said than done. And this striving and ambition towards your goals automatically has more excitement, meaning joy, and being present if you are a promotion-oriented individual. Language learners who have come to me, and I was also like this, are actually prevention-oriented, aka driven by avoidance of loss, failure, and shame. If you play not to lose, you are more likely to stress and worry during your journey because your efforts are fueled by fear. Let me tell you, it is absolutely exhausting to try to keep on avoiding shame and failure subconsciously. You definitely cannot enjoy the process like everyone is trying to tell you. That's probably why that advice also feels too generic and why you feel like you can't implement it because you're not getting down to the real root of what is causing you to not enjoy it. Also, when you're just driven to avoid shame and failure, and you actually win or reach your goal, it doesn't really feel that good. That is exactly what happened to me when I achieved one of my then goals of reaching B2 in five languages. I had technically won in a sense, but I felt like I had almost nothing to show for it. I felt a bit empty inside, like it just wasn't fulfilling. But yes, I thought I was totally driven for my yearning for success. And I couldn't even see shame and failure playing into that at all. I was driven to learn more and more languages at that point because I was motivated to avoid the shame and perceived failure that I thought I would feel if I ever slipped up in one of my five languages or made a mistake in front of my peers who I knew already looked up to me. I'm saying all of this in just the context of me being in college and people just knowing about my language learning interest and knowing that I was at the top of my class. But overall, with what I was doing, I wasn't inspired long term like promotion oriented individuals would be. In fact, I was over learning and over studying a lot of days. And I used this as a numbing tactic to help me block out that deep psychological shame I felt of I'll never be good at language learning and therefore I'm not worthy as a person. It's kind of sneaky what shame drives us to do. Because we are such high achievers and we like working hard, it's difficult to then decipher for ourselves when working hard really gets harmful for us. For example, I was numbing out by studying so much. Exactly what running away from my feelings looked like for me. And maybe it's similar for you too. I'd love to know in the comments if you can relate, by the way, to all of this hyper planning, hyper, I'm going to be more disciplined when you feel a lot of overwhelm or you feel clueless and out of control. Again, whole time I thought I was driven by success, but our emotions go a lot deeper into language learning than we like to think sometimes. When you truly understand that and your true motivation for what you're actually driven by or not driven by, that can give you a lot of clarity with discovering, okay, where can I go in my language studies now? 
Now, this next tip is what we are all guilty about, and that is choosing to punish ourselves. It's usually the subconscious go-to method for high achievers in general. Our number one problem isn't, I'm dumb, or I need to be more disciplined about this, or I need to get the next best textbook for this language or find the right method. The problem is actually choosing to punish ourselves, usually through negative self-talk. It leads us to shut down. It doesn't allow us to think cognitively. We cannot process our situation and our emotions effectively in that state. Overall, you're just less solution-oriented when you feel trapped in negative self-talk. We think that we are disciplining ourselves when actually we're punishing ourselves. All of this really ties in with emotional intelligence truly being the deciding factor of whether you have lifelong language learning confidence and success, or if you still continue to struggle and wonder what's going on. Emotional intelligence, again, it's a skill. You can learn it, but you must strengthen the muscle. So I usually recommend regulating our emotions by first, identifying in what context you regularly punish yourself through self-talk. Around 70 to 80% of our automatic thoughts are negative. It's really like a background fan. First, pinpointing when they hit you throughout the day is a great way to practice more emotional intelligence and growing overall first in your awareness. And again, once you're able to regulate and understand more deeply your emotions with more practice, which is what I provide in the Mindful Multilinguals Collective, you'll notice just how more capable and how many more tools are actually available to you for when you need to investigate any language learning setback or problem that you'll eventually encounter. Again, your creativity, your solution-based thinking, basically everything you need to solve your language learning problems and get yourself unstuck is unlocked when you actually work on not punishing yourself and showing self-compassion instead. And it's not just me saying this. Dr. Barbara L. Friedrichsen, professor at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, created the Broad and Bill Theory, which reads, if you can get yourself through self-compassion into a positive headspace, thoughts about positive actions you can take expand in your life, making choices to promote future positive states. It promotes the discovery of novel and creative actions, ideas, and social bonds, which in turn build that individual's personal resources, social, psychological, physical, intellectual resource functions that can be drawn on later to improve the odds of successful coping and survival, including in language learning, right? When we're in a negative emotional state, it's really hard to see any solution. Or we only see like one possible solution, but we're not aware of anything else, which can leave us feeling helpless. Your perspective is stunted, but self-compassion will widen that repertoire for you because it pulls you out of fear-based negativity if you work on it regularly and towards an increased feeling of safety within yourself, reassurance, positivity. It also gets you to taking risks more often. I hope you enjoyed this more mindful video about language learning and just how crucial our emotions play into our success as language learners. I'd love to know your thoughts about this video in the comments and check out this next video for more language learning confidence tips.